season two, episode 24, Is Fame Worth It? In this episode, I want to talk about a lot of different things for you guys to be aware of. The music industry has always been an industry which um, really brings in attention. And, you know, all, always like the spotlight is on somebody. All right. And if you guys know my approach, I just like high quality education. I've been doing this for a long time. Yes, I worked with a Grammy nominated artist. But at the end of the day, it's just something I can use for marketing. It doesn't really mean anything special, right? At the end of the day, everybody's human and you have to remember that. And I think a lot of people forget that in this music industry. Okay, especially on YouTube, YouTube is getting really, really clickbaity even more than ever. And uh, I want to talk about some things for you guys to be wise out there to not fall into, you know, the current trends of, and just to be able to really enjoy your beat making and your music and seeing results. This is what I have done. It's allowed me to get really far in this music industry financially, uh, education wise, and as well as my skills. Okay. Now, uh, before we get into this episode, I want to let you know that I just purchased a new single channel preamp. So I'm testing out my new voice running through it. Uh, It wasn't expensive. It was like $300. And uh, you would have already known that if you would have checked out my uh, new YouTube tutorial about how to buy music production equipment. I will leave that link in the episode resources, but I will tell you quickly how it works. So what I discovered over the years is if you go to sweetwater.com, since they are the number one industry leader, okay? So since I live in Canada, if I were to purchase from from Sweetwater, I would have to pay, you know, extra money to get it shipped across the border. But I use sweetwater.com for my product research, and I'll quickly tell you how I do that. So there is three quick steps. Number one is going to sweetwater.com and going into their product categories for what you want. Let's say you want an audio interface. Now they're going to ask you, is it PCI audio interfaces, Thunderbolt audio interfaces, but typically we as beat makers, we are using a USB audio interface. So you simply select USB audio interface. Now you filter it, like you sort the products from highest to lowest. This is gonna allow you to see the most expensive audio interfaces. And it is interesting to quickly look at them just to see like what really differentiates the, you know, these $5,000 audio interfaces versus the ones that you can afford maybe in the three to $500, okay? Now, once you know your price range, in the left sidebar on Sweetwater, you are able to put in the max price. For example, let's say $500. So what's going to happen is now you're going to be looking at all audio interfaces from all the brands because Sweetwater has all the brands. And that's what makes their website so awesome is you're able to do amazing product research. So you go to the audio interfaces, you sort from high to low, and you put in your max price and you will easily see all the products from all the brands. And then you can go and purchase locally and try to find the best price. All right. That is been by far the easiest way I've discovered to purchase music production equipment. It might sound simple, might sound easy, but I'm telling you, it will save you time. So again, check out the free tutorial in this episode's resources, okay? Now, before we get into this episode, again, I have a free book for you guys. It's called Five Keys to a Successful Beat. So simple, it becomes creative. It's written specifically for FL Studio music producers, but many people who are just interested in making beats will benefit from it. You can download it absolutely free by going to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys, sign up with your name and email, and I will send you the book absolutely for free. Again, visit the website, itsgratuitous.com. That is where I do all my tutorials. You guys can find all these podcast episodes. I do uh, written descriptions for each podcast episode. Sometimes it has images. For example, on the last podcast episode where I talked to you about different hard drives, there was um, images of my music production computer back in 2017. I explained to you about a, a real mechanical hard drive to a solid state hard drive with images, and it really shows you what's going on. Sometimes listening isn't enough, right? Sometimes it's nice to see visuals. So again, visit itsgratuitous.com. You will see my courses, my books, if you're interested in lessons, all that stuff. All right. Okay, so let's get into this episode about is fame worth it? Now, when it comes to the entertainment world, I would honestly say that the music industry is the most influential. Okay, yes, there's actors. Yes, there is, you know, athletes. But the music industry is the industry that 
takes the world by trends. And what I mean by this is doesn't matter where you are, you can put headphones on, you can put earbuds in, and you can just zone out to the music. And you know, for everyone, that's like their enjoyment. That's what they get to enjoy music. But you also got to be careful because at the same time, what is this music feeding you in a sense of, you know, what are they really saying behind these lyrics? But besides that, that's a separate um, episode. But I want to talk about is fame worth it by being a music producer? Okay. So when you become a music producer and if you start working with, you know, higher end clients, a lot of contracts are involved, right? A lot of you guys don't realize that contracts are everything in this industry. Your copyright is everything. As soon as you give away your copyright, it's like that's that's your product. If you create a beat, that's your product, but it really it's your copyright. You can sell that copyright in many different ways. You don't have to just sell it to somebody. You can license it to them in different ways, okay? But I want to talk again about fame. So when we are on YouTube and we are checking out, you know, all these different tutorials and, you know, nowadays everyone's face is in a thumbnail, right? Like more than ever. And everyone's always like pointing towards something. But what I want to tell you guys is the numbers are not what you think. Now, just because somebody is popular, that's fine. You know, they have a following. And people like their videos or their content, and that's great. But especially when it comes to, let's say, Spotify, you know, for example, you visit someone's page, and I'll tell you right now, like my page right now has like 50 views like a month. And, but what I wanna say is you can't really look at that number and base skill level, base influence off of it, all right? Because people can buy views. And listens. So, in other words, they can skew your judgment when you're looking and you're like, oh, this person has 50,000 views. Wow, they're actually gaining traction. Well, yeah, are they? Or do they pay for, for views and listens? I'm not saying that people do or they have, but I'm just saying that this is something that you can do, especially with like SoundCloud or, you know, if you want to buy subscribers or if you want to buy a product, you know, are the reviews actually real? And so you as the listener, you as the consumer, you know, you always have to be skeptical. And the music industry, this is how it works, right? It's getting it in front of your eyes, making you feel as if it's really, really special. But at the end of the day, most of these artists are all kind of copying each other. And I always talk to you guys about being original, being yourself and doing your own thing. That is what I've done and it's allowed me to have great success so far and I've helped a lot of people learn how to make beats. Now, the next point I want to talk to you guys about is the freedom to live your life normally still. As soon as you reach this level of fame, like, and I mean like super fame where like everybody knows you, you always hear horrible, horrible stories and like people are always in your business. It's like, do you really want that? Like for me, I like to take like a, like, um, like my mountain bike out. I don't, you know, nobody knows who I am. If I go to like the grocery store, it's such a freedom. Yet I'm still able to do what I want and make beats, teach people, talk with people. And I'm still a human. All right. As soon as you reach this fame status, you kind of pull away from being like a normal human. And I'm just like all you guys. I was an electrician for 10 years. So I know exactly what it's like waking up early, going to work, saving up, having goals, and eventually even reaching some of those goals, right? And it's just so exciting to actually do that and just build confidence is having people talk about you, what you really want. And I'm talking more like the gossip, kind of like, oh, uh, he has a child or she has a child or, you know, stuff like that. It's like, that doesn't pertain to you at all. You have no idea who most of these people are. You have no idea who I am. and when you are being lured into watching these people, you just have to be careful because you have to remember what are your goals. If you're wanting to learn to make beats, then get in there, have fun and make beats. Don't be comparing yourself because what you're going to do is you're going to start following the trends. And I always tell you guys the trends change. Okay. 
Now, to finish off this episode, I just want to tell you guys that the end goal is ultimately you want to be able to do what you want. And when you reach the level of like super fame, you're not actually able to do what you want. You're not able to step out of your door. You're not able to just hop on your bike and just drive down the street, right? You're going to have people probably taking pictures of you and everyone's trying to make money off of you because you're famous and everyone knows your name. And that's not what you want. There's a difference between success and fame. You can be tremendously successful and nobody knows you. And that's where you want to be because you get success. You get to enjoy the things that you want. And if you really wanted to um, promote or market, you know, then you can look into that approach. But the fame level is not what you think it is. It's very, very deceiving. It's very, very tricky. Okay. There is a scripture in the Bible that talks about a spider and it lures you into its web. And once you get into, into the web, you realize like, how did I get here? And we all know what spiders do, right? They come and they eat their prey. You know what I mean? And so you, you don't want to fall into that. The whole point of being a music producer, when you sit to make beats is like, this is your craft. This is what you feel is art. And it's so much fun when you can just sit there, you make your own style of beats, you do your own thing. It's just the best experience. That's all I can tell you guys. And I know that a lot of you guys nowadays are using loops, right? Pre-made drum loops, pre-made melodies. It's not making beats. And you want to get to the point where you can learn to make your own beats from scratch, your own melodies, right? You want to learn music theory. You want to learn how to program your drum loops. It's hard. It takes time. But I'm telling you, it is the most rewarding feeling. It's going to take you two, three, four years to be able to actually start getting a decent beat together. And then once you pass there, it even gets harder, right? You have to learn about compression and limiting and the mastering stage, which ultimately is really how your track sounds. I understand people say it's all in the mix, but in the mastering stage, you can really, really process your beat to get it exactly how you want, even if the mix is kind of poor, all right? If you really know what you're doing. And at the end of this all, guys, I always tell you, be yourself. It is the ultimate end all, be all for happiness, right? You are a unique person. Be yourself. Create your own style of music. I understand that the trends are what sell, but eventually the trends change and you're going to have to change with the trends and that's more tiring than being yourself and just going through the process, Okay, so that's it for this episode. So is fame worth it? It isn't. And there is a difference between success and fame. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are wanting to learn how to make beats with FL Studio, you guys should check out my website. It's gratuitous.com. There's tons of courses, books, and uh, you guys can start slow by downloading my free book. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. It's written specifically for FL Studio music producers tons and tons of valuable tips there's over 12 uh, different tips in there lots of valuable things that you know you will really see results in your beats if you read this book all right it's going to allow you to pull away from the trends allow you to really focus on what's important as a beat maker and you will see results so again just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys and uh, let me know uh, how you liked the voice in this episode. I'm going to listen to it when I edit and hopefully it all turned out good. And uh, so I'll let you know quickly. So before I was running through an art voice channel, I had that used. The tube failed in it. Okay. So sometimes when you purchase a single channel preamp. And so what that means is it's a, it's a single channel, which means you can only plug in like one microphone. So single channel. Uh, and then the strip means that it has processing in it. So in other words, you have a preamp, which means that it's boosting the microphone. Uh, typically, they have a compressor section, which means that you can get nice, even vocals before you even do post-processing. Post-processing is when you're using EQ and compression after the recording. Uh, it has like an expander and a gate to get rid of background noise. Uh, it has an EQ section if you want to get a little bit more boomy on your voice or even some, some clarity in the high end. And uh, they typically also have a de-esser, which removes the S sounds 
And these are becoming even more popular than ever when it comes to like, you know, podcasts or live streaming. You can get a nice vocal chain before it even hits your computer. And so anyways, I picked up the DBX. Um, it's called the 286S. It's really, really affordable. It's like $300. Even the used one I had, the Art Voice Channel, is like 500 brand new. I purchased it used. Um, but the reason why I wanted to switch was because first of all, it was used. I was having some problems with it and the tube failed and I did, I wanted to get away from the tube. All right. So over time, this tube, I guess, can kind of burn out. And the one I have now, um, it's just, um, a transistor, I guess. So in other words, there's no tube. I just turn it on, talk into it. And I'm hoping that I get just really consistent, easy results. That's the biggest thing, guys, when it comes to buying your music production equipment is results. $300 is cheap for a single channel preamp or a single, a single channel strip. Again, go to sweetwater.com, check out the single channel preamps and go the most expensive to the least expensive. And they are like $5,000. And it's like, that's ridiculous. Uh, within this audio industry, there is a lot of kind of like, I've seen that one guy on YouTube where he says like snake oil a lot. Right. And with audio, it's like, well, because we can hear it and not see it, you can be really deceived really, really easy. And I think my voice is going to turn out pretty good. So, um, yeah, so that's it for this episode. I'll talk to you in the next one. Again, definitely check out my website. If you need help to learn to make beats, it's gratuitous.com. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you in the next one.